Hey there, good morning. It is Thursday, September the 2nd, 2021. Welcome to the Morning Watch. Daily time in God's Word, where for the last over a year now, we've been doing one chapter a day. We are poised to finish the book of Revelation one week from tomorrow. So, good to see you. As you come in this morning, let us know that you're here. Give us a good morning. Uh, even if you check in later on today, if you watch this tonight, put a comment in the comment uh, comment line. We'd love to know that you're here. There's my sister Glenna. There's Peggy. Good morning. Give a second for some people to join. There's my mom. All right. Today we're in Revelation chapter 16. Um, things are this 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 story arc of the combination of history is coming to a head um, today <clears throat> if you remember from yesterday chapter 15 a uh, very short chapter only eight verses uh, John was seeing the preparation for this final set of judgments that are going to come on the evil of this world um, and we call them the bold judgments, the bold judgments. And if you'll, if you'll, if you'll, uh, as we read them, think about how they parallel the ten plagues that came upon Egypt when Israel was in captive, was in captivity there in Egypt as slaves. Um, a lot of crossovers, a lot of parallels. Uh, also, look for, if you remember, when the seals, when the seven seals were opened. Uh, it was, you could see the mercy of God embedded into those because it was like a third of this was destroyed, a third of that. Here, there is no mitigation. There is no pulling back. It's full force. So, uh, very startling, drastic measures that are being taken to uh, put to death the evil that exists in this world. Remember, God will make everything right that is wrong in this world, okay? And we see that happening here. All right, there's Terry, LaDonna, Rosemary, Wilma, Kim, and Robin. Yeah, wonderful. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning that you've given us. Lord, it's a cool morning outside. I'm thankful for the changing of the seasons. Again, it's another way that you show us and demonstrate your faithfulness over everything that we, that we do and are and how we live and we're just thankful for your word. We're thankful for your cross. We want to lift up those this morning that are in the hospital with COVID or other illnesses. Lord, we just pray that you would heal them. We pray, Lord, that you would sustain them and give them peace and comfort during this time. Lord, uh, be with us as we study your word this morning. We pray that you would make it come alive to our hearts and our minds and that we would learn about you and we would become closer to you because of it. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Let's... Let's read. <clears throat> All right, Revelation chapter 16. John writes, he says, Then I heard a mighty voice from the temple. Okay, this is the heavenly temple. Say to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out on the earth the seven bowls containing God's wrath. Now, since no one can go into the temple except for God, it is likely that this voice is the voice of God himself, the one on the throne. Right? So, so the first angel left the temple and poured out his bowl on the earth. And horrible, malignant sores broke out on everyone who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Or the statue that was in the temple there in Jerusalem. So what is this, what is this first bowl? What can we learn about, the, about, about this from the first bowl? Well, number one... Um, there are consequences to sin. You know, the ones, the believers, the Gentiles and the Jews who persevered and who did not take the mark of the beast, they are immune from this. This is only for those who gave in, took the easy road, decided to take upon them the mark of the beast to be able to buy or to sell, um, yeah, horrible, horrible sores, painful sores. Number three, verse three. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became like the blood of a corpse, and everything in the sea died. Everything. 
every fish, every animal, every piece of, of life that existed in the seas died. Okay. Again, major. Verse, verse 4. Then the third angel poured out his bowl in the, on the rivers and the springs, and they became blood. If you remember, that happened in the plagues. And I heard the angel who had authority over all water saying, You are just, O Holy One, who is and who always was, because you have sent these judgments. Since they shed the blood of your holy people and your prophets, you've given them blood to drink. It is their just reward. Okay? So this angel is pointing out the fact that these are the individuals who persecuted and put to death the people of God. All right? And so there is, again, there are consequences to sin. There are consequences to rebellion. All right? It says, And I heard a voice from the altar saying, Yes, O Lord God the Almighty, your judgments are true and just. All right, now who's at the altar? Uh, we're not really sure. It could be the altar itself. Who knows? Um, but if you remember back earlier on, the the martyrs to the faith were there under the altar. Remember, beneath, they were beneath the altar. The uh, the souls of those who had been slain uh, in out proclaiming the gospel. So here it's almost like they're calling out to say, yes, your judgments are true and just. Remember when they asked the question, those martyrs, how long? How long, Lord, will it be before you avenge our death? It says, Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, causing it to scorch everyone with its fire. Everyone was burned by this blast of heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had control over these plagues. They did not repent of their sins and turn to God and give him glory. And you think about what causes people to repent. What we learn here, it's not judgment. It's grace. And so right now we're living in that time of grace. The Bible says here that the people who have been rebelling against God, they won't, this, even this will not drive them to repentance. Verse 10, Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom, this kingdom that he had set up here on earth, was plunged into darkness. His subjects ground their teeth in anguish, and they cursed the God of heaven for their pains and sores, but they did not repent of their evil deeds and turn to God. This, this, is a, this picture is very reminiscent of the lake of fire. Remember when scripture talks about the wailing and gnashing of teeth. All right? And so here the beast's kingdom collapses. Verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River, and it dried up so that the kings from the east could march their armies toward the west without hindrance. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophets. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against the Lord on that great judgment day of God the Almighty. We're preparing for one last great battle. Okay? And so the Euphrates is dried up and it frees up the armies to be able to come. Now know this, as the beast gathers his army, the dragon is, is, is behind all this. Satan is pushing all of these armies toward Armageddon the valley of Megiddo to be able to launch one final great battle against God um, God is allowing this to happen because God is sitting there watching this knowing I am God they're not this is a fool's errand okay it's not gonna work verse 15 <clears throat> look this is this is this is the lamb speaking this is Jesus speaking this is this is a great thing for us to take with us today listen to what he says he says look I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching for me who keep their clothing ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. We have to be on the lookout. Now if we're raptured out first and the rest of the world that's left behind has to endure the tribulation, these are the events that will transpire while we've already been taken into heaven, if you know Christ. 
I get, like I said earlier, there are some people believe we'll have to endure some of this, maybe the first half of this. We're moving now into the second half. There are other people that believe that we will have to endure the whole tribulation, that we won't be raptured out until after. I don't know. We don't really, we don't really know how this is going to work out. But the only thing that, the only thing that I can think of this morning that makes any sense at all is to ask the question: Where do you want to be? Do you want to take that chance? Do you want to take that risk and not be ready and have to endure this? I don't. The key is knowing right now that if you died, that you would go to be with God in heaven. And the only way to do that is through a personal relationship with Jesus. You know, I don't want to endure this. Again, that's what grace does for us. The invitation is there. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, the Bible says. Here Jesus says, I'm going to come like a thief. I'm, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very unexpected. Are you ready? Verse 16. And the demonic spirits gathered all the rulers and their armies to a place with the Hebrew name Armageddon. Okay, this is a valley. It's about 20 miles long. It's about 14 miles wide. Um, uh, Gideon defeated the Midianites there. Saul lost his life there. There's been some major battles that have happened there throughout history. Um, you can go there today. It's a real place. And so the Bible says that that's where this final great battle will occur. Let's listen to this. This is crazy. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. And a mighty shout came from the throne in the temple, saying, It is finished. It is done. Then the thunder crashed and rolled and lightning flashed and a great earthquake struck, the worst since people were placed on the earth. The great city of Babylon split into three sections, and the cities of many nations fell into heaps of rubble. So God remembered all of Babylon's sins, and he made her drink the cup that was filled with the wine of his fierce wrath. A lot of people wonder who is Babylon here. Most people think that this is this is the beast's government that was set up. Okay, um, some people think it was Jerusalem. It's, it's it's again it's unclear. Listen to this: and every island disappeared. Every island. And all the, the mountains were leveled. Now listen to this hailstorm that we see here. There was a terrible hailstorm. And hailstones weighing as much as 75 pounds fell from the sky onto the people below. Can you imagine hailstones weighing 75 pounds apiece? They cursed God because of the terrible plague of the hailstorm. So, again, very startling, disturbing images. Very, um, even hard to read, right? Because you think about, wow, this is unbelievable. But the bottom line is, God will judge sin. That's, that's who he is. He has to do that, or he's going to be acting counter to his character. If we cannot, if God is not faithful in his judgment, all right, because sin requires a payment, then how can we trust him to be faithful in his salvation, right? That's who he is. He's just as faithful in his salvation as he is in his judgment. That's who he is. He can't act counter to that. He can't allow sin to go unpunished. The good thing about our sin, our sin is covered by the blood of Christ. Now, if you don't know him, then you are accountable for your sins and will be held in judgment for those sins. And even we as believers will have to stand and give account. But the thing is, there will be somebody there with us, our advocate Christ, who will say, they're mine. They gave their heart to me. And we'll be declared, we've already been declared righteous. We've already been declared that way. Our names are already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay, never to be removed. All right? So hopefully that gives you some hope today, even in the midst of these, of these, of this amazing story of judgment. Um, all right, let's pray together, and then we'll 
and then we'll go. Morning, Patty. All right, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness and mercy and grace. Thank you for your word, Lord, for your because your word is true. It never changes. You're the same, Lord, yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. Y'all have a great Thursday, and we'll see you tomorrow for Revelation chapter 17. Have a great day.